So here we are with uh, lesson four. Now I did promise that we'd talk about comments and we'd talk about functions as well. Now as we get as, as we head towards inevitably and eventually uh, object orientation, we need to encapsulate data. We need to sort of break down little functions into uh, little units of code. Now when do you need a function? When you write the same piece of code that does the same operation more than once, you probably need to turn it into a function. So this would be like I don't know making a a pizza. You make a pizza uh, once and then you make it again, then you make it again. You, you're making three pizzas. What you might want to do with code is because it's like a robot is some um, you can send that to a pizza shop instead and let that send you the pizza instead. So instead of doing the same thing again and again and again, just encapsulate the, the function, the procedure, and then just create a robot which does it for you automatically every time. Now I'm going to be, make very, very, very simple functions in this program. Um, just to show you the principle really and that there's not going to be any validation and stuff but you know we'll, we'll get the idea at least of uh, functions okay let's uh, let's crack on then with this program now one of the program problems that, program you know got my tongue in a twist there one of the problems that we noticed earlier was that when I was entering interest rates here I was entering them in the mathematical format, which is you know, between zero and one. Now, humans don't like dealing with uh, that kind of thing. Um, they'd much prefer to deal with big numbers like 5% being 5 or 17% being 17. So what I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to need to um, have a human interest rate and then turn that into a mathematical interest rate. So let's let's just get on with that now. So let's rename this human interest there's a bit of a joke there if, if you're thinking about it but uh, let's not let's not worry too much enter the interest rate now we're going to enter 5 or 17 or 12 rather than 0 0.05 um then we get back out the a bucket with a label on the side saying human interest and inside there there'll be the number 17 or whatever they've input but that's not going to work for the maths that we're going to have later so what we need to do then is we need to convert that into um, something which is divided by 100. So double, you know, I'll call it the old name again, interest. Um, we'll set that equal to human interest divided by 100. Now, we don't like hard coding, so we don't really like that 100 there. So what we'll do instead is we'll, we'll put another thing in so there's one place where we put all of these kind of hard-coded things so um what should we put there oh human to i don't know what can we call that we'll call it percent denominator or something like that. something a bit more kind of fancy percent denominator equals 100 so we'll try and put all our hard coding in one place and then we'll change that to percent Oh, it's already picked it up for me. Now notice we've got two operations which are the same. I know they're extremely simple. In real life you just leave them alone. But two operations. There's one there, division. And there's one there. And we're thinking, hmm. I could have a function, build a robot that just does that every time. I don't build a pizza shop to make my pizzas for me. So we're going to build a pizza shop to do these divisions. I, again, I do know that this is, in real life, you just divide. But let's assume that this is a more complicated thing. Uh, which it will be later. Uh, so we'd ra rather put it in a function than, than have to repeat it again and again. So let's let's build a function. Now in C++, I normally put them at the top so I don't have to declare them and then put them at the bottom to run them. So if you put them at the top, that's a good place to put them. The program recognizes them before it runs the main function uh, and loads them into memory so that when main sees them, it's all ready to go. So I'm going to call this function divisor uh, because it's a function that has brackets and it's just like uh, there we go. It's just like main, but main's a special one. That's the one the C++ runs, executes. Uh, we've got a few things wrong with this. The first thing we need to do is we need to tell C++ what this divisor returns. Now, if this is a robot function which returns nothing, we'd put void. It never, it doesn't return anything. It just runs and that's it. So this is, I'm trying to think of a good example here. It'd be like firing an arrow. You know, you fire the arrow, off it goes, and nothing comes back. 
So you put void, but this is a boomerang rather than an arrow. So it's, it is actually going to return something. It's going to return a double. So I say divisor, this new function I've written, I've created, which isn't a keyword notice because it's coming out there in white, is going to return a double. Fantastic. That's happy now. It's a bit less unhappy anyway. Now, what's the other thing we need to do? Well, <clears throat> pardon me. We're going to send in two numbers. So what we're going to do then is call this function device all with two numbers. There we are. Now you'll notice that this device all here doesn't have any inputs, whereas this device all down here is, is being called. This robot is being called with, you know, pepperoni there and extra cheese there. And then when we get to the pizza shop up here, it's going to come back with a plain margarita. So we need to put these two inputs here and here. And we need to have two new variables up here. So let's let's do that now. So what we'll do is we'll say this is... this Because this could be run a million times with a million different divisions. Uh, we'll say the first thing that's coming in is a double. Now... I have a version C++ with Xcode, which doesn't necessarily need to be a... Uh, it could be an int coming in, it will get turned into a double. Your version of C++ may vary on that, but uh, I can only work with what I have here. But if I send an integer into this function, it will turn it into a double, because it's clever. Uh, I'm going to call this variable numerator. Not numberator, numerator. And what should we call the second variable? Well... Again, it's, it could be an int, it could be a, a float, but I'm going to say that, just to be on the safe side, have enough capacity to be a double. Okay, so two things are coming in there. Now notice down here, this is now feeling a lot happier. However, this is now supposed to return something. It's supposed to send something to the left-hand side. It's supposed to return something, but this isn't returning anything at the moment. That's why I'm getting this warning here. So... What I need to do then is say, OK, then, let's return the numerator. I mean, I could return it. I could run seven, I could return 17.0 if I wanted. But I'm going to return the numerator divided by the denominator. I'm going to put extra cheese on denominator. There we are. Super. Not numberator. Numerator. Now, we're happy down here now. Yeah, you can see we've got a nice green colours popped up. That tells me that this is all a hunky diddly, super duper thing now. Fantastic. So I've got a function going on there. That's great. Now let's look for my other division place. Here it is here. Let's do the same thing here. Now we're reusing the robot. Only this time we're going to send we want um, a double chilies and um, extra pepperoni rather than what we ordered before. So two different numbers are going to go to the function called divisor. Yeah, it's valid, it's green. So interest and month in, months and years are going to go off to this function, come loaded, running in here and here, and then this operation, this cooking of the pizza, is going to be done in this oven every time rather than many ovens many times. Fantastic. So now we've got uh, that there. Now I'll, I'll even, I mean... I'll even comment this. Now, I prefer this kind of comment in C++. You can do C-style comments, where you can type any old thing, and then you start it off with a slash asterisk, and you finish it off with a slash asterisk. But I don't like that, because it often leads to bugs, because you don't know where you've commented and uncommented code. So I always use the single line commenting. Two slashes. Everything following it is completely ignored by the compiler. So, uh, this function divides two numbers and returns the result now in real life you should really be writing one line of um, comment for every line of code but you know I'll fill my screen with comments and I've only got a small screen so I can't do it but that's what you should be aiming I'll just do it once there just to show now I, again I, I will use the single line commenting just having a sip of tea there Okay, that's fantastic. So, um, 
now what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm just going to test this. Let's have a quick run, execute. Enter the principal amount, twenty five thousand. Enter the interest rate, seventeen percent. And it is thirty, and brilliant. It's divided it to a mathematical interest rate rather than a human interest rate. That's fantastic. I'm nearly done there. Um, is <clears throat> again, pardon me. Something went down the wrong way there. Right, let's uh, see if there's anywhere else where I can. Ah, I could probably make a function out of this. I know this is silly, but you know, just to show you, you can have more than uh, one function. So let's uh, let's go for this to multiplier. Years of loan. Anytime we need to multiply two numbers together, we'll do this. It's not going to like it because nothing's been declared up the top. Um, let's do that then. Let's. It's going to be very similar to this, isn't it? Already declared it, so you can't have it again. You can't have clones. So, well, you can, but let's not go there. Multiplier. Um, these aren't really good names, are they? So, first number, second number coming in, and this function uh, multiplies two numbers. And returns the result. So, let's copy this stuff here. Stick that there. Oh. Bit of jiggery, a bit of pokery. Super. And it'll return those two uh, those two numbers. Oh, so multiply together to form one number and it's again it's returning a double. Super. Fantastic. So what we got down here then. We think we've got everything we want now. Let's run it. Is this multiplier gonna work? This should if I go for 30 years, this should come out at 360, shouldn't it? So let's uh, let's give this a run. Let's clear this. Execute. Does it work? Does it will it compile? Super. It's worked. Um, let's go for our original hundred thousand because we're familiar with those numbers. Interest rate. Let's make it five because again we're familiar with those numbers. I mean, notice we're not putting 0 0.05 in now. Years of loan thirty. Return. Super. So we're getting out. 0.05 rather than 5. We're, oh, it's not really relevant, is it? We're dividing that successfully to 0.4 of a percent per month, which is this monthly interest figure here. And we're getting the expected 12 times 30 to get 360 there using our multiplier function. Again, not the most sophisticated functions in the world. But at least we now have the idea. So we put them at the top. That loads them into memory. And then C++ can then start the main program. Execute. Go, oh, divide. Oh, I know what that is. I got that earlier. I know what to do. It returns a double. This robot returns a double. It takes in two doubles. It does a little operation. And it returns a double. It returns the double to the left-hand side. Like passing port around the dinner table to the left hand side and multiply does a very similar thing and then away we go and we end up with this nice result here i think that that's probably enough thank you and good night